Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego, and we are here for another live stream chat about K-1 visas and helping you get through this K-1 visa process with as minimal stress and minimal cost as possible. You know, I, kn I know it's expensive to hire an immigration attorney. They're very expensive. Now, I'm not an immigration attorney, okay? I don't work for USIS, and uh, you know I don't give you any legal advice. But I've been through the K-1 visa process twice, successfully so far, and I've been through the uh, spousal visa process once successfully. So I know how it works. So I'm going to get you through this process for free. Now let me see. We got Christopher Stout. Christopher says hi, Diego. Which embassy has the quickest turnaround time? My fiance is Russian and can choose an em any embassy. I was considering Argentina. We're, okay, here's what you got to consider, Christopher, with picking an embassy. Can she get a visa? You got to think about the visa from Russia to that country. What are the visa requirements to enter Argentina from Russia? Check into that first, okay? Most importantly, what are the visa requirements to leave Russia to that country? Probably into Argentina, it should be no problem at all. Uh, Mr. Nahas, hey, Mr. Diego. Hey, Mr. Nahas, how are you? Kaiser H, hello, Diego. So once my NBC case file gets to ready status, <clears throat> then as per the packet of instructions, will be sent to my beneficiary's home address at what time frame? Kaiser H, you're going to be in control of your visa, okay? When it, missed, when it gets to ready status, everything is going to come to you, okay? Now, if anything gets mailed to your beneficiary, if she gets it, that's good. That's great. But you need to be in control of your K-1 visa at the ready status, Immigration, the embassy, email the embassy if you want to. Send them an email. Say, hey, I got my ready status. What do I do? Here's my beneficiary's case number. Here's her, her invoice number. And the immigration officer at the embassy will send you an email back with directions. The thing to hit in my case with Karina, okay, when I get the ready status from the embassy in Bogota, more than likely I'm going to be in Colombia. Probably I'll be there already. But I'm going to take control of the visa process. I'm going to email the embassy. Hey, you know, this is Diego. I'm here in Colombia. What do we do now? I know what we're going to, I know the process, but I'm going to send them that question. And then the embassy will respond back to me and say, okay, this is what you're going to do. It's that easy. So don't worry so much about your beneficiary getting information because Mr. Sponsor, Miss Sponsor, you are going to get that information. You're going to get it. Then you take control of it, and, it, and if, if you want to help your beneficiary fill out the DS-160, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. Print the confirmation page for the, for the, for the DS-160. you got to print the confirmation page. Don't forget. Jacob Myers. Hi, hello, Diego. Hey, Jacob. James Wan. Hi, Diego. Long time no see. Hope you've been well. Doing great, James. We're hanging in there. We're getting through this K-1 visa process. And yeah, and thankfully the temperature is coming down here in Florida. It's, it's not it's not cooking like it was cooking the last two weeks. So it's not too bad today. Uh, Christopher Brown, yes, Russians can visit Argentina visa free. Do you know the wait time for an interview? For Argentina, it's, it's going to be probably like Colombia. You know, take about eight weeks to get scheduled. Around eight weeks. Argentina is a good a good choice if there's no visa requirements to enter the country for Russians. But you got to get a set up in Argentina. Okay, got to set her up there. Uh, let's see. G. Musiana, any update on NVC time frame? I honestly, it's ninety days from NOA two to NVC welcome letter. Just pick ninety days. So for us, May 30th is our NOA2 letter. First week of September, we should see the uh, NVC welcome letter. You know, the NVC, I don't pay attention to anything they put out anymore. 
whenever the NVC tell me something, okay, it's not it's not always correct. Uh, Kenneth Barreto, hi Diego. Quick question: I'm planning to marry my fiance in Puerto Rico. Will there be a problem with us marrying in Puerto Rico, and then after that going back to Pennsylvania where I live? Uh, I need to investigate that more. Uh, Puerto Rico, you don't need a visa to enter the United States from Puerto Rico. You can travel freely between the U.S. and Puerto Rico. I mean, it's not a state. You know, it's not the 51st state, but pretty close, right? So I, in my opinion, probably not a problem. Probably easy, no problem. But I will investigate that a little further. Janet Smith. Hello, Diego. Hey, Janet, what's going on? Seven Angels. Hi, Diego. Hey, Seven. Jacob Myers, so I'm confused. Now, we're going to unconfuse you. Diego got an email that said you will be notified once the case is forwarded to assign to us, Embassy Consulate General, that my case was processed by NBC, and they gave me a case number. Okay, you got a case number. That means that the NBC has your visa in New Hampshire, and it's probably sitting on a shelf, and they're waiting for the embassy to get it. Now, remember, the U.S. Embassy in Colombia, okay, are going to start taking visas again in August. A couple more days. Three or four, in four more days, the NVC will start mailing visas to Colombia again, if you know, if you have, if you are watching us from Colombia. Uh, Seven Angels, how you been, bro? Doing great, Seven. We are hanging out here near Pensacola in the Panhandle of Florida. And Karina, my prometida, is watching us from Bogota, Colombia, way up in the Andes Mountains where it's cold and rainy, and the weather's probably terrible. But that's living in the mountains. Uh, Kaiser H. Diego, so since I will be helping my beneficiary fill out the DS-160, then should I include my name as the person who helped my beneficiary filling it out? That's up to you. I mean, it depends on how much work you put into it. Are you going to be the one filling it out? You know, can she speak English at all? Does your beneficiary speak any English? You know, that's up to you. It depends on how much effort you put into it. I mean, regard. I mean, I know you're going to put effort into it, but it depends on how much work and how much, you know, do you do the whole thing by yourself? You know, think about that. It's up to you. Sasha Lee, hi. hi. Do you know how much July 8th, 22, so how much? How much July 8th, 2022 cases left to approve? Sasha Lee, I don't know. They're, pro, you know, they're, they're, pro, I don't go by days. Immigration doesn't follow uh, range numbers. They don't go by days anymore. So, in regards, to, I go by month. And is immigration processing in July 2022 filers? Yes, they are. They want, they want to get them all done. They want to get everybody's visa, K-1 visa, adjudicated, approved, and sent to the NBC. They want it, They don't want it at USCIS. They want to get it done. So just be patient, okay? You just got to be patient. And, and quit looking at dates because dates are irrelevant. You know, I, they, immigration are not following case numbers, range numbers, or none of that. Seven Angels, I got our NOA 2 today, to Diego. Seven Angels, you got your NOA 2 letter today. High five. Congratulations. Jacob Myers, so you think the Philippines will start back up in August like Colombia? No, the Philippines are processing visas now, right now. Philippines is, are good. South Africa, they, they closed for three days because they got overwhelmed with K-1 visas. But NBC was sending out emails saying that the embassy in South Africa was closed. I'm like, what? I checked into it. I, I investigated it. And South Africa closed for three days. The embassy in Colombia, they, took, they stopped taking visas from NBC for July. But July is about over. Today's July 29th. And uh, 41 years today is the day I joined the U.S. Navy. Ah, imagine that. It's an anniversary. The Philippines, Jacob, are processing K-1 visas. Uh, seven angels. So three months wait for the case number. Yeah. Three months, 90 days, 90, 100 days is the average. Fresh Skater 24. Hey, how, hey, Diego, how's your day? 
Day's doing great. I'm having a great day. In fact, I had to fill up some cracks in the driveway. I guess uh, it's so hot here that the, the driveway had a little kind of crack appear in it. So I fixed it so rainwater doesn't get in there. So it was a good day. Uh, plus, I'm with you guys right now doing the YouTube live. Kaiser H, yes, my beneficiary does speak English. So what's your suggestion? My suggestion is you help her and then put her name on it. If she speaks English, you help her with it, and then she puts her name to it electronically, okay? Uh, seven Angels, thank you, sir, so much. No problem. Sheena Anderson, hey, Diego and Karina, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, Sheena and Christian. Sheena in Maryland, Christian in Dubai. Christian says hello. He's in Dubai, right? Tess and Ronco, good evening, Diego. I have a question. Great. My boyfriend sent me his tax returns from 19, 20, 21, and 22. Well, he didn't need to send you 19, okay? It's not necessary for 2019. His 2022 is missing because he extended it until October. Will it be a problem? Uh, they're going to want to see the 2022 tax return. Do you have a letter from the uh, – does he have a letter from the IRS saying that it's in a uh, extension? You got to be able to prove it's in an extension period. You got to prove it. If he's in an extension period for his 2022 tax return, there should be some kind of letter or documentation from the IRS somewhere saying that. Okay, then it's not good. You got to have the last tax return, but it's an excuse that will pass. Okay. So, you know, unless you get it by October, you know, your, your K-1 visa interview may not be until November, December. <clears throat> so, you know, you got to have a you got to have a letter from the IRS or an, or an email or something saying it's in an extension. Kaiser H. Diego. So since the new edition of the form I-134 will be coming out pretty soon, you are right. Uh, then will there be any changes to it? Well, I don't know. We're July 29th. The, the, the form expires July 31. So in August, I will know. Right now, I don't know. I have no idea. But in August, in the live stream, our first live stream in August, I will have the I-134 right here, and we'll go over it. And I'll, and I'll go over any changes. But right now, I don't know. We haven't got there yet. Uh, Tess and Rocco, I'll have my boyfriend have that letter. Tr thank you again, Diego. Yeah, no problem, Tess and Rocco. As long as you got a letter from the IRS or an email or something saying, I'm in an extension for my taxes, he can say, I paid my taxes, everything's good. And then he can write in the letter, you know, this is how much money I made in 2023, so, uh, excuse me, in 2022, but I'm in an extension. And he's good. Uh, Fresh Skater 24, I'm still trying to get an interview in Lagos. Keep trying, Fresh Skater 24. Do it. You can do it. LK, uh, for some reason, I don't see my invoice number on the letter the NBC sent me through an email. Well, you're not going to get the invoice number, LK, until you get the ready status. The U.S. Embassy doesn't have your case. It's at the NBC in New Hampshire going through case processing. So you have a case case number. When your visa gets to the embassy, you're going to get an in-transit, and then you're going to get ready status. When you get the ready status, email the embassy and say, hey, you know, I'm in a ready status. What's my invoice number? So I can process my visa. So you can pay for it. Now, remember, there's no cost for the DS-160. It's a free form. But there is a fee to pay for the face-to-face -face visa interview. And you're basically paying for the, you know, the, the processing of the visa. Here's my passport right here, you know. But for your beneficiary's passport, you're going to upload a passport photo with the DS-160, and then they're going to, you know, you're basically paying, paying for that work. Nick Palermo, good evening, sir. How soon can the beneficiary legally start working? As soon as she gets either her EAD work permit or 
his or her green card. Got to have a green card to work in the United States and a social security number. Green card, social security number, work permit, otherwise known as an EAD card, social security number, because an employer needs the social security number to enter into the system to, so that your beneficiary can stop paying taxes, FICA tax, social security tax, income tax, ex and state tax. If you live you know, in Florida, here in Florida, the great state of Florida, I don't pay state tax. Thank goodness. No state tax in Florida, no state tax in Nevada, no state tax in Texas. You know, there are, you know, some states you don't pay a state tax. Thank goodness for that. But there's not many of us left. Uh, Denise Jefferson, Diego, does the embassy keep any info besides the passport? If approved, wondering if they keep the beneficiary's original birth certificate. No, the original birth certificate goes back to the beneficiary. They cannot keep it. Okay, the embassy will not keep original documents. They will give them back when they're done with them. Okay, normally, normally it's at the they look at it, process it, and give it back to you at the embassy interview. Okay, but they're going to keep the copies. Uh, Kaiser H. Diego, can I have my retirement account as an asset in the I-134? And what other kinds of assets do you recommend that I should include? Well, you know, you can include the value of your house, the equity in your house. You can include how much money you have in your checking account, how much money you have in your savings account. You can include your 401k, the equity in your 401k, and then you add it all up, and then you put the total at the bottom, okay, very simple. Uh, Liz, hi Diego, how are you? Doing great, Liz. I'm worried that MVC will take another year like USAS. Can this happen? No, impossible, impossible. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be three or four months. It's not gonna be a year. Now, if the embassy is, is having a hard time processing visas, you know, then you know the, the the time frame could extend out to a year depending on the embassy, but I haven't seen any that I haven't seen any embassies wait that long. I mean, although maybe Turkey's had a few problems sometimes, but no, it's not going to be that long of a wait. Do not worry, Liz. It's not going to take that long. Lamin Jabang, hi. How are you? How long does the county of Senegal? The country of Senegal generally take to send a welcome letter. Well, the welcome letter comes from the MVC. The MVC then mails it to the, the U.S. Embassy in Senegal. So it's been, with you know, eight weeks, eight to ten weeks, somewhere in there. Not too bad. Senegal's doing a good job getting visas processed. Now, there's problem in Niger. Okay, the, the, military, <laughs> the military decided... They were going to take the president of Niger hostage or prisoner or whatever. And now the military is controlling Niger. So I don't know what's going to happen to the U.S. Embassy in Niger. More than likely it will close, just like in Sudan. And if the embassy closes, we're going to probably then, then, then K-1 visas for folks in Niger will be relocated to another country, probably in Africa somewhere, just like Sudan, since we now send K-1 visas, well, I don't, the, the State Department send K-1 visas for Sudan to Egypt. So if you live in Sudan and you have a K-1 visa interview, more than likely now it's going to be in Cairo. I guess the same thing will happen, just a guess, for Niger also. Uh, Kaiser H. Diego, I asked for my bank statements. Am I supposed to show how much money do I have in my both checking and savings bank accounts? Yeah. You just take it off your bank statements, Kaiser. Look on your bank statement, and over here it says checking amount for your balance, and over here it says savings account for your balance, and you can put that on your I-134. You go to the I-134 on the computer. You click on the arrow that points down, and then it, then it opens up the box, and you can write the information in with the computer. It's easy. Don't, don't overthink it, Kaiser. Don't overthink it. It's not difficult. Faith A, about Ethiopia, Ethiopia processing interview. Do you have an idea? 
eight to 10 weeks for Ethiopia. Ethiopia, Ethiopia is politically stable, beautiful country, no political problems. Uh, the government's running smoothly. The U.S. Embassy's running smoothly in Ethiopia. Everybody's getting along with everybody in Ethiopia. No issues. The problem countries that we have, problem countries, Venezuela, problem country, Cuba, problem country, uh, Russia, problem country, uh, Niger, problem country, Sudan, problem country. Those are the North Korea is... I, if you are North Korean, okay, you're going to have to get out of North Korea, probably to communist China, to get your K-1 visa process. If you can even get out of North Korea without getting killed, you know? So, you know, it, the world is a mess, right? The world is in a mess. And all we're trying to do is get reunited with our loved ones. Uh, faith, A, Ethiopia is good. James Wan, how long does it usually take to get the visa after the interview? Well, in Colombia, it takes about four to five days, three to five days, somewhere in there. Can the fiance pick it up at the same day? No. The embassy, uh, oh, this will be from Mumbai. Okay, so India. So in, in India, the consulate in India, it's about four to five days. And when you fill out the SEAC, when you create your SEAC account and schedule the visa interview, they're going to ask you where do you want to pick up your, your passport. They'll give you a pickup point. And then you put it down right here is where I want to pick up my passport. And then they'll send you an email or a, or a text message and tell you the visa is ready for pickup. And then you go get it. For Karina, she's going to have a choice of about 20 uh, pickup points in Colombia, in Bogota, 20 locations, courier locations, where she can jump on the bus and go get her, her passport, her Venezuelan passport. And I'll go with her. We're going to be together by then. Uh, Kaiser H. Diego, so how, so for how long, many months am I supposed to have both my bank statements and work pay stops? I would get 12 months worth of bank statements and six months worth of pay stops. So the month of your fiance's visa interview, let's suppose Karina's visa interview for me is November 2023. I will have bank statements for October, September. You know, I'll have 12 months back from October. It'll probably be hard to me for me to get my November bank statement. And then I'll have six months back from pay stubs from, uh, let's say, October, September, August, July, June, May, somewhere like that. Put them in a folder. Create a financial folder. Create a folder for your financials. Tax return, tax transcripts, W-2s, 1099s, pay stubs, letter from employer, um, you know, things like that. Put together a folder to to uh, for your financials. Don't try try to make it as easy as possible. You want to make it as easy as possible for the immigration officer to go through your documents. So if, let's suppose you have a joint sponsor. You got a joint sponsor. Joint sponsor is going to make a folder. In the folder, it's going to be the joint sponsor's ta tax return, 1040, tax transcript, uh, W-2s, 1099s, letter from employer, pay stops, uh, you know, bank statements, things like that. <clears throat> and then you're going to have a folder for you, Mr. Sponsor, Miss Sponsor, an exact copy of the joint sponsors except your tax returns, your tax transcripts. Your W-2s, your 1099s, bank statements, etc. Letter from your employer. Okay. Keep it easy. Make it easy for the immigration officer so they can flip through it quickly. Uh, Zoila Molina, thank you, thank you for India info. No problem, Zoila. We love our friends in India. Beautiful India. Now, what I recommend you guys do, use Mr. Sponsor, Miss Sponsor. I recommend. If you have a desktop computer, like I got a desktop computer right here, go into Google or, or whatever you use for your internet and go in and create um, in your in the memory, in the favorites, uh, your the arrival and departure website, I-94. 
when you when you're a beneficiary and it's the United States of America, the Border Patrol officer will create an I-94 uh, number, entry number for your beneficiary. You won't get it at the Border Patrol at the airport. You have to go wait for about a week or two till it gets populated. Then you go online and then you uh, you go into the form I-194, the I the form I-94, excuse me, and then you print the form I-94 from the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol website. Put it in your computer favorites, so you have it, so you can so you can go in there and find it easy when it's time comes to process your adjustment of status. Because when you process your adjustment of status paperwork, you're going to have to include form I-94 for her or him or any of her children. So if you bring in three people to America, the beneficiary and she has two kids. You're going to print three I-94 forms, one for the beneficiary and one for each child, okay? Put it in your favorites. If you want to make sure you put the, you're paying the right fee, let's suppose you, you're watching the channel because you want to put together a K-1 visa package. You're, you're trying to learn how to put together a K-1 visa package. Save on your computer desktop the USCIS fee calculator, okay? The fee calculator, will you can click on it. And then you can put in there what form it is you're going to process, I-129F, I-485, whatever it is, and it will tell you how much it is for the fee, for the visa. So that way you don't mess up the price. If you put the wrong price, when you, let's suppose you're going to file for a K-1 visa. If you don't fill out the check properly for $535, if you don't put it, if you don't write the check out to U.S. Department of Homeland Security properly, They'll reject your visa. They'll, they'll send it back, the package. So you got to be real careful on what on how you put this stuff together before you mail it to the lockbox in Dallas. So put in here on your save, put on your favorites, USCIS fee calculator, I-94 official website, so you can get the I-94. Just some ideas for you guys. Uh, let me see. Teja Sweeney Mumadi, can you can your fiance visit you on a B1 visa while waiting for the fiance visa? Sure. B2 visa. You're talking about a tourist visa on a B2 tourist visa. But what I recommend you got, Mr. Sponsor, Miss Sponsor, it is so much easier for the sponsor to fly on an airplane to your beneficiary's home country. It's much easier for Mr. Sponsor. It's a, I can buy a plane ticket right now to Bogota, Colombia, be there next weekend and have no problems with immigration. Although there's one lady that doesn't seem to like me very much because I keep flying back and forth to Colombia. I guess she's sick of seeing my face. <laughs> That's not my problem. But it's easier for the sponsor to enter the beneficiary's country than it is for the beneficiary to get a tourist visa. If Karina wanted to come to the United States on vacation, which she can do, she would apply for a B-2 visa, which would take about 600 days. Well, in 600 days from now, Karina and I will be already married and here in Florida. So, you know, the, trying to get a tourist visa is not easy. It's a long process. But it's, it's you, you can. It's allowable. Uh, Kaiser, Diego, so for my tax transcripts, 1040s, W-2s, et cetera, should be for how many years? Get three years, 2022, 2021, 2020. The immigration officer at the consular officer at the embassy is 99% of the time going to ask for the last one, 2022. Uh, uh, Mr. Kaiser, I need your 2022 tax return and tax transcript or tax transcript, tax return, or both, or this one, or this one. So have them both. Okay, back there in the bedroom, I've got three folders. Folder one are my tax transcripts and tax returns for 2020. Folder two is 2021, and folder three is 2022. Karina will have three folders. She, when she goes to her visa interview, she will give to the immigration officer what the immigration officer asked for, nothing more. So if the immigrant and 99% of the time at the embassy in Bogota, Colombia, they're asking for the last tax transcript. So she'll hand over my 2022 tax transcript, my 2022 1040, and my 1099. I wasn't working in 2022. I was in Colombia 
for 10 months. So I, I was on my military retirement. So all I have is a 1099. But they'll get over it. Immigration can see that. I got evidence I was in Colombia. No problem. Sharon Persekian, hi, Diego. Hey, Sharon, what's going on with Sharon? Ruby Areve, hello, Diego. Thank you. No problem. James Wan, Diego, the consulates have said that you can apply for tourist visa in different countries. So, for example, in Singapore, it only takes about, it only takes about 30 days to get a tourist visa. Okay. If you can do it that way. Uh, so, you know. No problem. Ruby Arrive. Buenas tardes, Senor Diego. Aquí and Damos. So he, I understand, Ruby. No problem. Buenas tardes para ti. También. Tu día bien hoy. Mucho trabajo hoy. Fin de semana. Tu relaja hoy. See? ¿sí? Sábado, no trabajo. Relaja en casa. <clears throat> uh, Sharon Versikian. Still waiting. Teja Sweeney Mumadi, we filed April 29th, 2022, got approved June 2nd, 2023, high five, and my case was sent to the NVC on June 26th, uh, 2023, when can I expect my NVC welcome letter? Well, if it's sent to the NVC on uh, June 26th, give them about a week to process it, They get, get, give them time to process it. But he should, you should already have received it by now. If it's at the NVC, maybe they're waiting on the embassy. Maybe the embassy is busy. You know, the NVC may have it, but if the embassy is real busy, then it's going to sit at the National Visa Center. No, right now there's a whole bunch of visas, approved K-1 visas for for sponsors with beneficiaries in Colombia that are stacking up at the NVC. Because the embassy in Bogota won't take any visa, K-1 visas, until August 1st. So starting in about three days, the NBC is going to start mailing visas to the embassy in Bogota, which means beneficiaries, primarily sponsors, actually the sponsors, will start getting their in-transit status and their ready status. Uh, Teja Sweeney, uh, Mr. Nahas. Is there any upload document during the processing at NBC? Zero. Mr. Nahas, you don't upload a single document to the National Visa Center. It's, what you're going to do is you're going to, your beneficiary is, is going to bring all the documents to the embassy interview in a big pile. Karina, in her, in her maleta, in her, in her cartera, okay, in Karina's handbag, in her, in her bag, she's going to have all the documents for her visa interview. And she's going to bring them to the embassy. The original I-134, my tax returns, my tax transcripts, letters of intent to get married, original, signed in black ink, signed and dated two weeks before the visa interview. She's going to have um, the, the I-129F. We made a copy of that from when I originally filed the K-1 visa back in April of 2022. Um, She's going to have the NOA-2 letter, the NOA-1 letter. She's going to have the confirmation page from the DS-160. She's going to have the welcome letter from the MVC. All that stuff she's going to carry with her to the embassy interview in Bogota. Um, so you don't have to upload any documents, Mr. Nahas. The only thing you have to, uh, the only thing that gets uploaded, okay, is the passport photo for the visa when you fill out the DS-160. When you're a beneficiary, or if you do it for her, fill out the, the DS-160, you got to upload a passport photo, so which the immigration officer will use for the K-1 visa. Uh, let's see here. Tajas Fwini Mumadi. Also, I did hear that some people do not receive a welcome letter. Is that true? That's true. It's ha that, that happens sometimes. Also, mine is Indian Embassy Mumbai. It's the consulate, not the embassy. The Indian Embassy is in New Delhi. Uh, the consulate is in Mumbai. And in Mumbai, that's where you process K-1 visas. But you'll get your welcome letter. If you don't, send an inquiry to the NVC and ask them for it. Uh, and then also email the embassy 
uh, in your case, the consular officer in Mumbai and say, I don't have my welcome letter. As long as you got documentation that shows that, you, that you've been trying to get it and then you ask for it, then you'll be okay, okay? Lamin Jabang, hi Diego, thank you. Lamin, no problem. Teja Sweeney, so if my case is already at NVC, I should have received my welcome letter, right? Yeah. Send him an inquiry, ask him, where's my welcome letter, Teja Sweeney? It won't hurt you to, it, it won't hurt to ask. Ask him, hey, where is it? Uh, James Wan, my situation is very interesting. My fiance's petition got sent back to USCIS. However, USCIS reapproved it. And again, last month, would that reset the USCIS to NVC clock or should I contact NVC? I think what will happen in your case is, it, is that the USCIS will send it to NVC and NVC will send it straight to the embassy. It's not going to, it's just slowed you down a little bit, but it's not going to, it's not going to make it a one year add on. Okay. I would, I would say this. If USCIS reapproved it, NVC is not going to send it back a second time. Okay. NVC is done with you. Okay. They'll get it. They'll, they'll give you a case number. They'll check with the embassy. See how busy the embassy is. If the embassy is not too busy, they'll send it, put it on a plane and get it to that, to your beneficiary's embassy. Okay. Mr. Nahas, thank you. No problem. It's good to help you guys, okay? I know going through this K-1 visa process is not easy. It's a difficult and a stressful process, and it's a long time. It's a, the waiting is probably the hardest part of this whole thing. So I basically put the channel together to give you some place to go, to help you, somewhere for you to go, to ask questions, because the questions you ask me are probably the same questions that you are going to want to ask USCIS. The only difference is I give you the answer right away. You don't have to wait for a month for, an, for a response. You know that on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to be here to answer your questions. And nine times out of ten, I know the answer. Because nine times out of ten, I've been through the exact same thing that you are going through and that you're trying to get an answer to. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> James Wan. Thank you. High five, super chat. I appreciate you, James. James Wan says, cool, thanks. I appreciate the information. Not a problem, James. Now, remember, guys, I do this for you for guys for free, okay? You don't have to, you don't have to, to send a super chat, but I appreciate them, okay? I appreciate them, and it makes me feel good that you appreciate the time that I'm investing in you guys. But the thing is this. I know, I know how hard it is to go through this process. And I and I feel I feel for you guys, especially if you're getting ready to file a K-1 visa. Okay. If you are right now getting ready to mail one to the lockbox, that's fine. The process is going to be a lot quicker for you than it was for us because COVID is gone, the backlog is already cleaned up. Um, you know, so the process is getting back to pre-COVID days. But the you gotta also understand that the uh the rules were changed a little bit, making it a little bit longer of a processing time. COVID or no COVID, it's going to take a little bit longer to process a visa than what it than when it did when I applied back in 2016 on my first rodeo, because they're going through second checks now. Okay, immigration, USCIS will get it. Okay, they'll look at your K-1 visa package at the uh, service center, California, Texas. They're going to go through it with a fine tooth comb. They're going to look for errors, mistakes. They're going to look for if you forgot to include something, if you're missing a final divorce decree, uh, if you didn't include, if you forgot, you know, even to sign the, the, the form. They're going to go through it one time with a fine tooth comb. And then what's going to happen is they're going to give it to a second person for a second review. USCIS officer will give it to another person. That person will go through it a little quicker and go, okay, you're good, sign off on it send it to the NVC. Okay. That's the process now. Jacob Myers, high five, Jacob, super chat. Thank you. I'm going to, you beating the Pete B today on the, uh, on the Mountain Dew. I'm going to go to uh, Walmart tomorrow and stock up on Mountain Dew. because I was getting a bit low because it's hot. It's so hot here in Florida. Thank you so much, Jacob and James for those two super chats. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. Uh, Tejaswani Mamadi, 
after receiving my welcome letter, how long does it take to send it to the embassy in Mumbai? Uh, about three weeks. And how long to schedule the interview? That depends on how busy the, the consular officer is in Mumbai. It can change from month to month. So I would say give yourself six to eight weeks, okay? Okay? Uh, since we need to schedule the interview according to Indian, according to the Indian embassy. Why do you have to schedule the interview around the Indian embassy? This has got nothing to do with in the Indian government. This is between you, Mr. American citizen, your, your Indian beneficiary, and the U.S. government. It's got nothing to do with the Indian government. Uh, Joe Atala. Hello, Diego. Is it possible if there are a lot of refugees in our countries to try to have a visa interview to come to the States? Is that affect our welcome letter and create some delays? No. Refugees are processed by a whole different group of people. You got people processing K-1 visas. You got people processing spousal visas. You got people processing asylum seekers. And you got... the. the you, you, let me show you if I have it here. I don't know if I, I don't, I think I got threw it away, but I had a I had a, a flow chart of US of USCIS. It's a huge, huge um, organization, okay? That's ran by Homeland Security. Homeland Security is in control of it, okay? And it's broken down to into all these different departments, and the service centers are just a very small part of USCIS. OK, you got people for processing F1 visas, uh, tourist visas, in the, but they get really looked at. They get looked at. It's a, it's a massive organization. Uh, so, no, Joe Atala, you, the, the asylum seekers are not going to have any effect on your K-1 visa processing at all. It's not going to slow it down. No. Uh, Faith A, can both file, filling out DS-160 different part? or even if we are in a different country. Faith A, the DS-160 is going to be filled out in the SEAC account, the, council, the Consular Electronic Application Center, okay? doesn't matter if you're in America or if you're in, in uh, Italy, wherever it is, okay? It needs to be filled out and, and then printed. The confirmation page has to be printed. doesn't matter what country. You can fill it out. I can fill out Karina's DS-160 right here on my computer if I wanted to. Cruz 2202, hello, Diego. We have already filled out the DS-160. We paid the visa fee. Cruz, you're on a roll. Now I want to schedule the appointment at the embassy in DR, Dominican Republic, right? Hope to find an interview soon. Cruz 2202, buena suerte para ti. No problem. You're going to get your visa... The Dominican Republic are processing K-1 visas quickly. You're going to be good. It's not going to be hard to get a, a visa interview at the at the embassy, okay? Uh, so Cruise 2202, you relax, okay? You got this. Tejaswini Mumadi, so currently. Cur don't understand what you mean, Tejaswini. Repeat it. Kaiser, Diego, once my MVC case file is at the ready status, then should my beneficiary schedule the medical exam? Yes. Get the medical exam scheduled. Yeah, it's good for six months. If you and schedule the K1 interview, since the medical exam is only valid for 30 days. The medical exam is not the medical the medical exam is valid for six months. Okay. The DS160 is valid for 30 days. Kaiser H, write this down. Get a pen. Get a pen. Write this down. DS160 equals 30 days. Medical exam equals six months. Okay, you're good. Uh, Jacob Meyer, so approximately how long should it take from the NVC having my case ready to the Philippines embassy so we can pay and set up the interview? Uh, so approximately how long should it take? Okay, about, th give, you, give it a three-month turnaround, Jacob. 12 weeks, 9 to 12 weeks, right in there. The, the embassy in Manila are processing K-1 visas. There's no issues there. Everything's good. The, the U.S. Embassy in Manila. Now, the medical exam will be at, uh, I can't remember the name of the hospital extension. Uh, can't remember. Man, I should know that. But you, you get the, your beneficiary gets the medical exam done, and boom, you're in. It's no, it's no problem. You just can't accompany your beneficiary to the visa interview, unfortunately. 
In Manila, they won't let you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Andrew Bryan. Hello, Diego. Hello, Andrew. Does the COVID vaccine mandatory to travel from Jamaica? Yes. You, the COVID vaccination is mandatory for a beneficiary to get a green card. Okay, let me, let me correct myself. The COVID vaccination is mandatory for the green card. It's not mandatory to travel for foreign nationals to the United States for a tourist. K-1 visa technically is a temporary visa, so she can travel to the United States without a COVID vaccination from Jamaica or any country in the world, okay? But the problem comes when you get to adjust the status for the green card, okay? When you file for the green card, you have to include your vaccination certificate of all your vaccinations, mumps, rubella, polio, COVID, uh, pertussis. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole list of them that are mandatory, okay? So it is possible to travel to the United States without a COVID vaccination, okay? There's not, they're not going to stop you entering the country, but they will, they will deny you a green card if you don't have the COVID vaccination, plus the others. Uh, Teja Sweeney, so currently my, fian my fian fiancé is working in the United Kingdom. Okay, very nice. And we are waiting for our welcome letter. Uh, don't forget, Teja Sweeney, your your uh, fiance is going to need a police certificate from the United Kingdom, plus the home country. Okay, remember if if your fiance has been working in the United Kingdom for six months or longer, police certificate. Okay, I already sent the NVC an inquiry. Very good. I will send one again Monday. Send it today. Send it tonight. Send it tomorrow. <clears throat> Keep, keep sending inquiries. You can. Uh, so when should I tell him to go to India? Teja Sweeney. Uh, if, if your fiancé is working in England, why not, why not schedule the visa interview at the U.S. Embassy in London? You can, if he's in England, why would, he wanna, why, why would your fiancé get on a plane and fly to India if he's working in England and living in England, right? Is that what you tell is that true, right? Your fiancé lives and is working in England, the United Kingdom. Schedule the embassy interview for London. You don't have to do it in Mumbai. You can do it in London. And uh, the U.S. Embassy, they just made a, they just constructed a new one. It used to be in Grosvenor Square. Now it's in another location. But I would get it done in London. Teja Sweeney, so, can he gather, so he can gather all the documents and attend the interview. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Start getting the documents ready. Uh, Lulu, Lou, uh, Lou, excuse me, Lou, I will have four months in two weeks waiting for the welcome letter. Start sending inquiries, Lou. Start punching that inquiry form. Cruise 2202, yes. Cruise 2202, thank you. Donata, Cruise 22, no problem. Donata, Janet Smith, hey Diego, how long does it take to arrange an interview in the UK? About two months, six to eight weeks. The, 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 embassy, the embassy in London is, is doing pretty good. They're not, they're not backlogged. Jacob Myers, LOL, it's another three months from case number from NBC to ship to the embassy. It's crazy, isn't it? It's a waiting game, Jacob. It's a waiting game. Okay? It's a waiting game. NOA 1 to NOA 2, 12 months. NOA 2 to NBC welcome letter, three months. Welcome letter to embassy ready status, three to four months, depending on the embassy. Total processing time frame, 18 to 20 months. NOA 1 to visa in the passport. NOA 1, visa in the passport, 20 to 22 months. Uh, let's see. Andrew Bryan, thank you, Diego. I'm the beneficiary, but my medical exam will be next week. Okay, but the thing is, I don't take the COVID vaccine as yet. Plan about four vaccines are missing from my immunization card. Andrew Bryan, Karina lost her entire vaccination card. It's, it's, in, it's in Venezuela somewhere, buried under a bunch of books, papers, or whatever. So I started... Karina on a, on a vaccination 
I emailed her, or actually I screenshotted the list of vaccinations that are required. She got it. She saw the list. She's like, okay, she's Venezuelan. She's strong. You know, nothing bothers her. I mean, she survived a communist dictatorship. She, you know, she survived a lot. So getting vaccinations is no big deal. So every week she goes and gets vaccinations and they update her vaccination card. She's, she only has to get three more and she's done. She'll have all those done by, by the middle of August. She's done. So include, you know, so if you need COVID, get it, get it done, get it all done. The reason I say get the COVID, get the uh, vaccinations done in your home country, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, is because it's, it's less money. A, co- a vaccination in the United States is expensive. Okay. So I've got, so Karina so far has spent about, I don't know, 300 bucks, 290 bucks, somewhere in there on vaccinations, which would cost me a grand, $1,000 plus here in Florida. So get them done in, in your home country. Lou, can the fiance send an inquiry to NBC for the case number? Sure, absolutely. Teja Sweeney Mumadi, because we mentioned when filing that we would attend the interview in Mumbai, would that not be a problem? You can when when it, you can email the NVC, send an inquiry to the National Visa Center, and say, "Hey, my fiance is in England. Can we transfer the visa interview to London?" See what they say. I mean, it would be a lot quicker to get it done in London than it would in Mumbai. In my mind, I'm thinking from looking at the data. If your benefic- if your fiance is in London, England, right now, in England, London, wherever in England. Right? It's cold, it's rainy, but he's got fish and chips and Jaffa cakes, right? Why would he want to get on a plane and fly to India to attend a five minute visa interview when he can get that done in London? I'm going to save him a plane ticket, right? I'm going to save him the stress of flying from England to India. I don't know how far that is, what, 12 hour flight? Get it done in England. Send an inquiry to the National Visa Center, where they have your visa, and say, Dear Mr. National Visa Center, please, can I transfer my case, my visa interview to London, the embassy in London? That will save your fiancé a lot of money, a plane ticket, stress, blah, 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 right? Will it cause a delay in our case? No. It won't cause a delay in your case. How is the process to transfer the case to the U.K.? I just explained it. Send an email, send an inquiry to the NVC, say, this is my case number, this is my invoice number, whatever you got, and say, please, my, my, my fiancé is in, is in England, please, can I transfer my visa interview to London? Just send an inquiry and wait for a response, okay? <clears throat> and, then, and then let me know what happens. Uh, it won't cause a delay, no. Jenny Brielle, Andrew Bryan, how long was it from NBC to Ready Status for Jamaica? Okay. Nick Paloma, what's the timeline from Welcome Letter to Ready, Ready Status for Mexico? Interviews getting scheduled regularly? Yeah. The interviews are getting scheduled in Mexico, Mexico City and Sudan. No problems. Mexico is good. They're doing good. Uh, Vanessa Robles, hi, Diego. Congratulations to Cruise 2022-02. Uh, hi Diego, hi Vanessa, and and you're talking to Cruz 2202. He's Dominican Republic. He's on a roll. He's going to get the visa soon. Tasha Slinius World to Andrew Bryan. How long did you wait to receive the welcome letter for Jamaica? So we got good interaction going on in here with you guys talking back and forth to each other because now you're finding that you know some of you guys are in the same boat and the same embassy and the same country. Right? So this is beneficial. Now you can coordinate, exchange emails with each other, exchange WhatsApp numbers, and help each other through the process. So if you, if you, you know, if there are three people in here in Jamaica waiting for their visa interview, you all should exchange WhatsApp numbers and email addresses and help each other through the process. What do you think about that idea? Okay, guys, I've been talking for 54 minutes. We'll we'll go for about 10 more minutes. So come on. Let's see. Oh, okay. Case is ready, but no invoice yet. 
from the embassy, but they sent me instructions for the next step. Okay, we'll read that instruction manual, LK, and see if the invoice number's in there. If it's not, send them an email and say, hey, dear Mr. Embassy Officer, thank you so much for the welcome letter, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for sending me the instructions, but I need the invoice number. And they will, se they will send it to you, okay? They will send it to you. You got to be, once the NVC, send your visa to the embassy, okay? The NVC has washed your hands. They've washed their hands of it, okay? The embassy is in control of it. When USIS sends your visa package to the NVC, USCIS has washed their hands of your visa. If you send a, a, an inquiry to the USCIS service center, they'll say, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't have a record of your record here. Call the NVC. If you contact the NVC and the NVC sent your visa to the embassy, NVC is going to say, I don't have a record. You need to contact the NVC. Okay? So you, that way you guys understand the flow of communication. Uh, let's see. Denise Jefferson, Diego. You said that you and Karina's letter of intent will be signed up to two weeks before the interview. Yeah, about two weeks before. Uh, is that a feel good or is the timeline not a requirement as opposed to the original? No, that's the original. I'm gonna once 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 I schedule Karina's visa interview in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, probably I'll get the welcome letter probably September of this year. So by November, I'll have her visa interview scheduled in Bogota, probably, probably middle of November. Two weeks prior to the date, let's suppose that I got her visa interview scheduled for November 15th. Uh, October 30th, October 31st, November 1st, somewhere in there, we will write our second letters of intent to get married. We will sign them in black ink and date them. And then I will have Karina's letter of intent to get married translated into English by the Spanish group. I will take a screenshot of the letter of intent to get married with my phone. I will then uh, email it to the Spanish group. Within two or three days, they'll translate it, send it back to me in an email. Then we're going to run down the, the four flights of stairs, go to the print office down the street in Bogota, and they will print. The, the translated letter of intent. The translated letter of intent uh, to get married, okay, with the certification will be behind the Engl the uh, the original. Um, Nick Palamo, Sudad Juarez, sit right. That's that's correct. When I refer to the embassy in Sudad, Mexico, I'm talking about Sudad Juarez. City of Juarez. Sudad is Spanish for city. Sudad Juarez. That's correct, Nick. You're right. Ja, ja, boy. We finally got interview date on September 4th. There you go. So, ja, ja, boy, you got your interview date September 4th. That will probably be the week that I get the welcome letter from the NBC. Let's see. Let's see how close we are. Tashalini's world. Yes, great. Kaiser H. Diego, do you know what is the appointment approximate cost for the medical exam? which my beneficiary has to take in her home country. Every country is different, Kaiser. Bogota, in 2016, when I got the first K-1 visa medical exam done, it cost me 150 bucks, okay? Now we're in 2023. It's going to cost me probably $400 for Karina's medical exam in Bogota. So for me in Colombia, 400 bucks. For you, I don't know. Uh, also, will she be notified where she has to go for the medical exam? She, she, you will get a list of doctors approved by the State Department in her country for the medical exam. That's correct. You got to go to a doctor or a civil surgeon. They call them civil surgeons, politically correct civil surgeon. If you're going to, you got to go to a civil surgeon that's approved by the State Department, by the embassy in her country. Of, or, of where she lives. Denise Jefferson, Diego, the two weeks is not a requirement. No, it just needs to be an original yes. No, that's correct. That's just me. I'm just going to do two weeks out. You know, that's that's our case. And I'll be in Colombia, so it'll be easy. I'll be right there. She'll, Karina will write her letter. I'll write mine. Boom. Print, print, sign, date. 
two weeks out. But that's, you know, it could be a month out. You just got to have a second letter from the beneficiary and the sponsor. So it's an, and, and it just needs to be an original. Yes, it has to be original. Denise, Diego, does my beneficiary need a social security number to be added to my insurance right away upon entry into the U.S.? I'm getting mixed opinions. Uh, no. Pete B., Super Chat, Mountain Dew money. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate you. I'm running out of Mountain Dew. Okay, and you just you just re got me another six pack. Thank you. You're you're on it, buddy. And Denise was asking me about social security numbers. Now, when Karina gets to the United States of America, we're going to get married within about a week of her setting foot on the U.S. soil. I won't have a social security number, but the U.S. military Tricare health insurance will let me put her on my medical insurance without a social security number. But I got to have a marriage certificate, okay? So, Denise, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to prove to your insurance company that you are married, write a letter or whatever, an email, and say, I am married. My beneficiary is from this country. We are, we are waiting for his social security number. It will be arriving at our house, you know, soon, but I need him on my health insurance, okay? Your insurance company will probably respond in kind and say, okay, Denise, we will put him on your health insurance, tentatively awaiting the social security number, okay? So what happens with me? Okay, let's suppose I put Karina on my TRICARE medical insurance, and then I don't go back to TRICARE. We, she, Karina gets her social security number and a year passes and I don't go and I don't notify TRICARE that she has a social security number. I will get a letter from TRICARE, my insurance company. My health insurance company will send me a letter saying, Diego, you got married to this lovely lady from Venezuela. She's a legal resident with a green card living in the United States, but we need her social security number. They'll send me a little nasty letter saying, where is it? Okay. So what I recommend you do, Denise, is contact your insurance company. Show, uh, show them the marriage certificate. Get a, sort of, get a copy of it. Notarized if you want to. Get it notarized. Write a letter to your insurance company. And say, hey, put my, put my husband on my insurance. Uh, and as soon as I get the social security number, I will notify you. And they will put him on your insurance. Ingrid Rogers. Hi, Diego. Does my fiance and I have to get married before he can get a social security number? Yes. Ingrid, that's correct. You got to be married first. And then you adjust the status to green card. And then you get the social security number and the green card about the same time. Uh, let's see. She Denise Jefferson. Thank you, Diego, for clarification. You're good, Denise. No worries. You can put him on your insurance, okay? You, I mean, you just gotta, you just have to uh, give the, give your insurance company a warm and fuzzy that you promised them that you will provide them his in, his social security number as soon as you get it. It's not your fault. Immigration make you wait, right? But he needs to be on health insurance, so you're good. You just gotta, you just gotta explain it. You know, you can make a photocopy of his K K one visa. Get a photocopy of his K-1 visa and his passport so that they can see that he's illegal, that he entered legally in the United States. Print the I-94 uh, form showing that he had a face-to-face -face interview with the with the Border Patrol officer. The I-94, a copy of the K-2 visa, uh, excuse me, K-1 visa, a letter from you, and you're good to go. And they'll put him on his ins your insurance. Shane P. Hi, Diego. Pete B. Finance here. Pete B. Fiance. Pete. Shane P. Hey, good to see you, Shane P. You, you're in the Philippines, if I remember, right, Shane P.? And Pete B. is keeping me stocked up in Mountain Dew so I don't dehydrate in this hot Florida sun, plus all these lights in the, in the, uh, in the uh, K-1 Visa YouTube studio. And I get sweaty in here, but it's all good. Good to see you, Shane P. Thanks for watching from the Philippines. I know it's got to be very early in the morning there, right? It's got to be, what, 
six o'clock in the morning. Uh, Ingrid Rogers, thank you. No problem, Ingrid. Uh, Shane P, watching from the Philippines. I, I remember you in the Philippines. Kaiser, Diego, what is the approximate time once the adjustment of status has been done for my beneficiary to get her two-year green card? It depends. It's a two-year conditional green card. It depends on what state you live in, Kaiser H. In Florida, it's taken about eight, nine months, six to eight months, somewhere in there. If we lived in Nevada, it's taken about a year. If we lived in uh, Midwest, or let's say we lived in uh, Oregon, somewhere like that, it's taken like you know, 12 to 14 months. It, each district, each part of the country have different workloads. So it depends on where you live. And Minnesota, yeah, probably take about, about nine months in Minnesota. It's about a nine-month turnaround in Minnesota, Kaiser. Uh, James Wan, how long does it take to get advanced parole for my fiance once she comes into the United States? I've read getting the green card might take eight months. Yeah, eight months is about average to get to, and she would like to visit her home country. Okay, James Wan, advanced parole will take about three to four months, maybe five months, maybe six months. It could take six months. Here's what I'm seeing, okay? It's taking between six to eight months to get the work permit, EAD form. It's taking six to eight months to get the advanced parole document so you can travel without your green card. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, I would recommend that you do not travel on advanced parole. In my humble opinion, I would recommend you do not apply for an EAD work permit. It's going to cost you a couple of hundred bucks. By the time you get the EAD work permit, two weeks later, a month later, you got your green card and social security card. So you spent 300 to 500 bucks on work permits and advanced parole documents, and then you get them probably a month before your green card and social security card. So that makes the advanced parole document and the EAD work permit irrelevant. Save the money. Be patient, okay, and just wait for the green card. Just my opinion. When Karina gets to the United States of America, I'm going to apply for a green card, her probationary two-year green card. And that's it. I'm not going to apply for a work permit. I'm not going to apply for advanced parole. There's no, re there's no reason to. Her green card and social security card will be here just as quick. James won a dollar. Thank you, James. Thanks. I might as well have her just wait. James, just wait. Just wait. Just be patient. Just wait. Once When Karina gets to America, she ain't going anywhere. Not until she, be, not until she becomes a U.S. citizen. Then we're going to go on vacation. Uh, Jenny Brielle, Tashlin's World, are you on Facebook? Guys, if you guys are on Facebook... Friend each other if you're in the same country. If your beneficiaries are in the same country, friend each other and help each other get through this process. Uh, Denise Jefferson, Diego, do you remember on your first time around if the addition to your insurance was excessive, excessive because of your spouse being new to the country? No. No, it didn't change. No, my insurance basically, uh, it went up in price because I added a person. But it wasn't a big, it wasn't excessive. No, not a problem. It went up in price. It went from single rate to family rate. No big deal. Uh, Shane P, 9.06 a.m. in the morning. Shane P, well, good morning to you in the Philippines. LK, looks my NO2, which should not run out by August, was extended because in the email I received from the embassy, it says I have until November 26th to submit my application. LK, whatever the expiration date says on your NOA 2 letter, disregard it. I know it says it's good for four months, right? It expires. It's in four months. It, my NOA 2 letter expires in September. But I don't, I don't pay attention to it because I won't be able to get an immigration face-to-face -face embassy interview till probably November for Karina. So disregard it. You are in an immigration process, okay? 
whatever it says on that NOA2 letter applied back 10 years ago before the COVID. Uh, but James Warren, thank you for that super chat. I appreciate you. Janny Briel, this was my question. What is the lead time between EAD and green card? About, about six weeks. Janny Briel, you get your EAD work permit in your hand, and about four weeks to six weeks later, you're going to get your green card and your Social Security card. So basically, you're going to get – you're spending all that money on, an, on a work permit that you can only use for probably two to six weeks. It's not worth it. Just wait for your green card. Uh, Faith A, I thought to apply Social Security number. No need marriage certificate. No. You got to have a marriage certificate. You got to be married to a U.S. citizen in the USA, okay, to get a Social Security number. Wandering Terrier. Hey, I like that name, Wandering Terrier. I hope he doesn't wander off too far. Wandering Terrier. Hey, Diego, new here. Hey, good to see you. But I've been watching your videos for about five or six months. Thank you for your help. You have given me and my fiance with the timeline and info. Keep up the amazing work. So Wandering Terrier, you've been watching us for six months. And the channel, this is your channel. Okay, guys, it belongs to you. You own this channel, guys. It's, it belongs to you. Okay. If it's helping you get through this process, if it's, if it's getting you educated on the K-1 visa or the spousal visa, I don't talk much about uh, K-3s, okay? I don't talk much about uh, B-2 visas in here or F-1 visas. That's not my area of expertise. K-1s is where it's at with me and spousal visas. I know those processes like the back of my hand, okay? I know the process. I bet USCIS would probably hire me if I applied for a job there, which I'm not going to do that, but they would hire me. Uh, wandering Terrier, glad, I'm glad you, I'm glad we're helping you. Okay. Nick Palomo, even if we file for adjustment of status within 90 days of arrival, green card has taken eight months to arrive. Yeah. About right. Uh, Jihad Fearless. Hi. Hey, Jihad. G Jihad. Jenny Burrell, definitely not worth it. I'll take your advice. Jenny Burrell. It's going to cost what three, four, five hundred dollars for an EAD work permit and advanced parole document. Put that money in the bank, okay, Mr. Sponsor, Miss Sponsor. Take your beautiful new bride or husband somewhere, you know, nice restaurant for dinner, buy some clothes, do something productive with the money other than giving it to USCIS. Because by the time you get your EAD work permit and your advanced parole document, Right in front of that, uh, give or take four or five weeks, you're going to get your green card and your social security number. Save the money. Just be, you know, be patient. You know, don't be impatient, guys. You cannot be impatient in this process. You can't. You'll get sick if you do and angry and frustrated. And, you know, don't do that. Uh, G, G. G head Fliss, I sent my file K-1 fiancé visa last year. Okay, uh, August 12th. So so you are an August 12th, 2022 NOA-1 letter, correct? So August 12th. So by next month, by next month, you should get your NOA-2 letter. September at the latest, okay? Tash Alana's world. To Jenny Brielle, did you get your welcome letter? She's from Jamaica. So Tasha Lannis World and Jenny Brielle, you guys need to hook up with each other on Facebook or something and so you can help each other get through this process because you both are from Jamaica. So the first person to go through the, the Jamaica interview process can help the other person with the process, right? Uh, Denise Jefferson, Diego, I've heard of an instance where a beneficiary got a 10-year visa versus a two-year do you have an idea why or how that is true? Okay, you'll get, you're talking about a 10-year green card, right? A, a beneficiary will get a 10-year a green card if a person has been married for two years or longer. So if you're going through a spousal visa, Denise, if, if it's a spousal visa 
and the beneficiary comes to the United States on a on a CR1 on a CR1 spousal visa and they've been married for two years or longer, the beneficiary will get an automatic 10-year green card. Okay. If a person comes to the United States on a K-1 visa and they get a 10-year green card, that's an error. That's a mistake by USCIS, and it needs to be addressed to USCIS. If somebody comes to the United States on a K-1 visa and they get a 10-year green card for, right off the bat, that's a big mistake. It will create a problem uh, when it comes to get U.S. citizenship because the person will assume, well, I got my 10-year green card. I'm good to go. When they're not, Denise Jefferson, Denise, you are a strong supporter of this channel, Denise. Thank you so much, Denise. High five. Denise, you are the not the strongest supporter of this YouTube channel, and, we, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for that super chat. And let me, let me explain to you. Let me finish up this explanation for you, okay? If, if you come to the United States on a K-1 visa and you get a 10-year uh, green card, when you go to apply for U.S. citizenship, the immigration officer is going to ask you, when did you lift the conditions on your two-year green card? Well, you didn't because you got a 10-year green card right off the bat. The immigration officer will say, we cannot approve your U.S. citizenship at this time because you need to adjust the status on your two-year green card first. So you're going to have to go back and lift the conditions off of a two-year green card, which you didn't get, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you are on a K-1 visa and you get a 10-year green card, write to immigration right away and say, you messed up. Please send me my two-year green card. Otherwise, you will have an issue when it comes to U.S. citizenship applications in three years from now. <clears throat> uh, Fliss, the age is not a problem. No, there's no problem with age gaps, okay, with a K-1 visa. Age is not a problem, guys. You know, I'm, I'm like 22 years older than Karina. I got my visa approved. I was 30 years older than my first beneficiary. Got my K-1 visa approved. Age, the age gap isn't a problem with immigration. They don't care how old you are. What they care about is that you're in a real relationship. So if you're 20 years older than your beneficiary, whether it's a guy or a girl, it's, it's irrelevant. As long as you put together a good K-1 visa package, you're good to go. You know, that's like saying, is height a problem? You know? Is height, a, you know, is the, is the girl taller than the guy? Is that a problem? No. It's irrelevant. What they care about, or or, or is, is race a problem? You know, you know, there's a white guy who wants to marry a, a, a you know a, a black lady from Africa. Is that a problem? No. USCIS don't care. Okay, they they're not racist. They're not age discriminators. They don't discriminate about because if they did, they'll be in trouble. There's congressional laws that prevent that. What they care about is are you in a real relationship? Okay, so age isn't a problem. Denise, again, thank you, Denise, for that uh, super chat. You, you are a very, very strong supporter of this channel. I'll repeat that again. Uh, Teja Sweeney, can, I, can we send multiple inquiries to the NBC? Knock yourself out. Knock it, knock it out. Just as so long as you've been waiting 90 days or longer. Okay. Uh, Teja Sweeney. Is talking to G Jenny Briel, Denise Jefferson. Thank you again, Diego and Karina. Not a problem. Karina's watching us from Bogota, Colombia. She's at work right now. It's Saturday night. She's she's the manager of this ice cream store in northern Bogota, and she's but we in her ice cream store. She's got this really really big uh, screen TV, flat screen TV, and she can watch it. She'll plug it in, and then in Colombia, there's this there's me speaking English. And then all these clients sitting in her restaurant, looking up at the TV, going, "Ah, uh, uh, what's what's this? I don't, I don't know how to play English." Anyway, that's my story. So Denise Jefferson, you're welcome. I'm glad to help you, Denise. Uh, Jeff Mantok, is the person going through the K-1 visa from the DR still in here? I don't know. That we'll find out, right? Wandering Terrier. Myself, UK. Okay, Great Britain, United Kingdom. 
My fiance, America, filed in March, so we have a while to, to wait. Not too, it won't be too bad. It won't be that long of a wait. You'll be surprised. But I was wondering what the rules are about being able to visit your home country after you marry. Okay, Wandering Terrier, when you marry your American citizen sponsor, you guys get married, okay, you get your green card. You can travel to, to the United Kingdom and fly back and visit your family in England. It's no problem. The U.S. government is not going to deny you uh, travel. They're not going to restrict your travel. They won't, but you got to have your green card, okay? Make sure you got your green card. Don't travel on an advanced parole. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend traveling on advanced pro. I don't recommend getting advanced pro. I don't recommend wasting your money on an EAD card. But uh, which part of England uh, do you live in, Wandering Terrier? Wh which part of the United Kingdom do you live in? Uh, Tejaswini Mumadi. Hello. Also, Diego, should I send an inquiry to the NBC after receiving the welcome letter to transfer my case to the United Kingdom, or can I do it? Or can I do it not for my fiance? In, okay, Teja Sweeney, if you want to transfer your visa interview to the United Kingdom, the U.S. Embassy in London, tell the NVC that you want to do that. Make sure you tell your benef your fiancé in England that you have switched the embassy interview to London so he doesn't get on a plane and fly to India. Everybody's got to be in coordination with everybody else. Okay. And then you want to probably want to email the MV, the uh, embassy in Mumbai, India, the consulate, excuse me, and say, uh, I'm transferring my visa interview to the U.S. Embassy in London. Uh, Nikita, Nikita Ajane, you missed my question. Okay, Nikita, let's see. What's your question? Sometimes they don't come through. It does not popping up in here. I don't see it. Repeat it. Nikita, repeat your question. I'm sorry. Sometimes they don't come in. Uh, Teja Sweeney Mumadi, what are the processing times in the United Kingdom? About six to eight weeks. Daggy, hello, Diego. Happy Saturday. Buona sabato. Gracias. Hello, Daggy. I'm late. No, you're not late. You're never late. You're not, nobody is ever late on a Saturday. Okay, they are detained elsewhere. You are detained elsewhere, Daggy. You are not late. We had an extremely heavy storm, and they just stormed out the power. It was so humid and hot. Sounds like you moved to Florida. Uh, Expo this Expo's edition, dear Diego. If my lawyer makes an issue makes an issue on our personal information, will that affect our interview questions? God bless. Well, God bless you too. And uh, you know, honestly, you really don't need an attorney to do a K one visa. It's an easy paperwork, my friend, but, you know, whatever your lawyer put on the paperwork is what the immigration is going to see. So I can't answer your question. <clears throat> Les F, what month are they processing now? Les F, they are processing August 2022 filers. They are processing July 2022 filers. They are processing June, May, April, and the tail end of March. I think they've done completed January and February. Uh, Andrew Bryan, Tash, to Tashlin World, it took me 87 days to get the welcome letter, which is within 90, you know, 87, 90 days. That's what I've been saying. Uh, Daggy, I emailed the embassy to send me instructions, but I haven't heard back yet. Okay, just wait it out. Thomas K, thanks for your work, Diego. No problem, Thomas. Uh, I'm in Ventura, California, beautiful v Ventura. And my fiance is in Abuja, Nigeria, beautiful Nigeria. We are waiting on our interview in Lagos. Yeah, checking every day for about a month yet. Yeah. Keep checking, keep checking, and, and then one day you're going to pop in there and get it scheduled. And then uh, you're going to be reunited with each other, okay? Teja Sweeney, Diego, are you able to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me whenever you are free? Maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I'm really stressed and I have to many I have many, I have so many questions. Can you guide me through this? Now, Teja Sweeney, I'm one person, okay, that, that does this for you guys three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. 
So I really, I don't get a lot of time to do face-to-face, -face, individual, one-on-one. -on -one. If I do it for one person, I have to do it for everybody, and that's not going to be fair to everybody, okay? But Teja Sweeney, I want you not to stress about this process. It is not difficult, okay? It's not difficult. Let me, let me explain it to you this, this way. If you qualify for the benefit, if you meet the income requirements, okay, if you don't have any criminal convictions that will disqualify you, if you filled out the paperwork properly, okay, if your relationship is real with your, with your beneficiary, you will get your visa. You're going to get it. I will guide you through it Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. If you want me to sit and talk for two hours, I will sit and talk for two hours. Teja Sweeney, I will guide you. If you need me to sit for three hours, I will sit for three hours. But I, I, don't, I cannot do one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Because then it wouldn't be fair to everybody else. Uh, Daggy. Also, what is the benefit of the 16-digit invoice ID for scheduling interviews? Can you explain? The invoice number is used to schedule the interview with the case number. It's controlled by the State Department and the Embassy. Juan Carlos Pata. Hi, Diego and Karina from Fort Lauderdale. Very nice. Good news that the Embassy in Bogota will resume with K-1 visas August 1st. You got that right. Let me see when we get an interview. You'll get it. I was, I, I was actually on the phone with Senator Rubio's team. I was talking to Senator Rubio's right-hand man, okay, Jr. And, uh, you know, he's, he, Senator Rubio is on the Senate Armed Services Committee. He's a very powerful hammer in Washington, D.C. So Senator Rubio basically unglued a problem visa for one of our YouTube viewers in uh, Nicaragua, okay? He got... There was problems there, and we got it unproblemed. Myself, Senator Rubio, coordinated with the embassy. So in regards to Bogota, Colombia, Karina lives 20 minutes from the embassy. I'm on, I, got the, I got a direct line to the, to, the, to the consular officer, and I'm like, hey, what are you guys doing? Why is NBC sending out these, these bogus emails saying, because of COVID, the embassy's closed? The NBC was putting out bogus information. They were lazy. They were in a hurry. They were in a hurry. Oh, we got to notify the, 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 the sponsor. The embassy's not accepting visas right now. The NBC only had to do one thing. Send an email saying, during the month of July, the embassy in Bogota, Colombia, is backlogged with K-1 visas. They will resume processing in August. That's all they had to say. And then there would be no, there, then I wouldn't be calling the embassy. I wouldn't be calling Senator Rubio. I wouldn't be calling uh, his immigration team. I wouldn't, you know, Karina wouldn't be on a bus going to the embassy doing a face to face. None of that would have happened. But the NBC got, got, they got lazy and got complacent. And now you know the truth. August 1st, the US Embassy in Bogota will commence again processing visas for K 1. Uh, Lise F., thank you so much, Diego. No problem. Lise Les F., not a problem. Uh, Teja Sweeney, does the NBC reply on the weekends? I, I don't know. I've never had to call them on the weekends, but you could try. Pete B., uh, I, to Nikita, I think if you tell the interview officer that your fiancé got a new job and can provide deep details about his new job, you should be golden. Oh. So Nikita had a question about a new job. A new job isn't going to affect anything. When you fill out the I-134, okay, Nikita, if you got a new job in the middle of a visa in a visa process, in the middle, you're in the middle of a K K-1 visa, and you got a new job. When you fill out the I-134 declaration of financial support, you're going to put in there: this is where I work. This is how much money I make. This is how much money I'm going to contribute to my future wife or husband. You can back that up with pay stubs, bank statements. Don't worry about your tax transcript. You got to have it. You got to have your tax transcript. But if it doesn't match your current situation financially, as long as you can prove that you got a new job and that this, here are your pay stubs, here are the direct deposits into your bank, you're good to go. I think I just answered your question that I didn't see. 
Uh, Daggy, sorry asking, but I want to understand it. I created the account without the invoice number. So when is the 16-digit invoice number needed? At the ready status. When the U.S. Embassy is ready for you to process a K-1 visa with them, they will send you an invoice number. The MVC will not give you an invoice number, Daggy, because your visa is not ready yet. Uh, Juan Carlos Para. Buena trabajo. Diego. Nice work, Diego. Good thing you put them on blast. Too many people affected. Yeah, too many people were getting affected. And all they had to do was explain. You know, we're, we're everybody in here is in a K-1 visa process. And, all, and, and what we don't like is not knowing what's going on. When we don't know what's going on, we get in a mental block. When we get a mental block, we don't... We don't see a light at the end of the tunnel for our beneficiaries. So in regards to the embassy in Colombia, the MVC was saying that the, that the embassy was closed because of COVID. That was not true. So everybody with a visa pro going through Colombia were in a panic mode. When I knew good and, good and well, the embassy was open and processing visas. So I had to bring the hammer down. Not on the embassy. The embassy's doing a good job. I had to bring the hammer down on the National Visa Center. <clears throat> uh, A.M. Jago. Hi, Diego from Indonesia. Beautiful Indonesia. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, A.M. Jago. Indonesia is a beautiful country. It's a very calm, relaxed country. I think it's, a, I think it's like two big islands. John Labat. Diego, if we receive our ready status, I can go into the into the SEAC. Schedule the account, set up the I schedule, set up the okay. You don't set up the I-134, John Labat. You fill out the I want you go to USCIS.gov forms and you fill out the form I-134 on the computer. You print it, sign it, and date it. Don't do that till August. Because the form I think is going to change on August 1st. So in August. Join me on the live stream, and we will go over the I-134. You can fill out the DS-160. You can set up the visa interview in Manila. Uh, I'm three days away. How do I get her to, to sign on the computer? Fill out. If you want to help out John do the DS-160, you do it. You do it, okay, and sign it for her. But you got to send her the confirmation information. You got to get her the I-134, the original signed form. She's got to have the original I-134 signed in black ink and dated. Send it via DHL. Um, I don't know where does she live in. I can't remember where she lives in, in the Philippines. But I'm sure she can get to a, a DHL uh, station somewhere, right? An office, DHL, FedEx. Is FedEx in the Philippines? I don't know if FedEx is in the Philippines. FedEx is in Colombia. Uh, Tej Yaswini, how is the spousal visa? Spousal visa is uh, a nightmare at the MVC level. I don't recommend a spousal visa. I recommend the K-1 visa. If you are not, if you are single or, or divorced or widowed, going through the K-1 visa, stay in the K-1 visa. Don't get married. Number one, you lose your 535 bucks. Number two, you're going to go through a nightmare process at the National Visa Center. It's a nightmare. Stay single. K-1 visa all the way. Uh, Daggy, NVC sent me an eight-digit invoice number. Okay, well, you can use that in your SEAC account to schedule the visa interview, to pay the visa fee, to fill out the DS-160. John Labatt, do we set this up when I get to Cebu? Then I'm confused how I can help if I'm three days away. Okay, you can, you can log, if you have a laptop computer, if you have a computer in Cebu, in the Philippines, I'm sure there's a laptop computer or a desktop computer with a printer, you can fill out the I-134 in Cebu, print it, and sign it, and give it to your beneficiary. Piece of cake, right? It's easy. I'll be in Colombia. I will sit at my d dinner table, my dining room table in our apartment in Bogota. I'll fill out the I-134, the current edition, I'll print it, I'll sign it, I'll date it, and I'll hand it to Karina for her interview. But don't send a scanned copy. 
there's a good, you know, you make sure they have the original I-134. Make sure they got the original second letter of intent to get married. Uh, make sure you, that they bring, that the beneficiary brings her original birth certificate or birth certificates. Okay. Divorce decrees have to be certified uh, copies. Final divorce decrees, not a magistrate report. Okay. Certified final divorce decree stamped by the, the government office and signed. So, John, when you get your visa interview schedule, John Labatt, once you get the visa interview schedule, if you're in the Philippines, if you're in Cebu, find you a desktop computer with a printer, fill out the I-134. Fill it out, print it, sign it. Uh, Teja Sweeney Mumadi, how long does my fiancé have to stay in the USA before traveling to other countries? As long as she wants. As long as she's got a green card, she's got to have a green card to travel. How long will it take for him to work after coming here? As soon as you get the green card. Eight months, six months, eight months, ten months. Andrew Bryan, Jenny Brielle, took two days for the NBC to ready status. Appointments are going into September now. So Andrew Bryan is saying that, you know, get online and start processing for your visa interviews. Uh, James Wan, it costs about $100 via FedEx to send a letter internationally. Yeah, it cost me $55 to send a FedEx from Bogota to uh, to uh, Pensacola. Uh, James Wan, not too bad. No, not too bad. Uh, Sandesh Patil, hi, Diego. I'm waiting for MVC almost 74 days. Wait another 20 days. You're from India. Well, we'd la we'd, we love our friends in India, beautiful country. And, uh, you know, India is a very beautiful country, but it's about another 20 days wait, okay? John Labatt, easy, yes. No, I'm bringing all originals. Thanks again. John and Gigi. Okay, John Labatt, I'm glad I unconfused you. Now you got it in your head, right? You know how to do this. You got it, right? High five, John. Uh, Christy Garcia, hey, Diego, just joined the live. Hi, Christy. If applying for the tourist visa, the applicant needs to take... I-134, yes, given by the person they're visiting, yes. No, incorrect, no, 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 no. Christy, if you're, if, if somebody, let's suppose Karina wants to come to the United States on vacation, okay, for a tourist visa, B-2. She will fill out the I-134 on behalf of herself. I am Karina. I work here. My income is this much. My house is in Venezuela. I am not going to, you know, I'm not going to become a public charge in the United States. And Karina will sign the I-134 as a tourist visa. But she's not coming to the United States as a tourist. She's coming to live and get married to me. So I take responsibility of the I-134. I fill out the, the I-134 as the sponsor. I sign the I-134. My income goes on the I-134 because I am taking responsibility for Karina when she's in the United States. If Karina was coming to the United States for a tourist big vacation, she would fill out the I-134. She would assume responsibility financially for herself, okay? And she would sign the I-134. But I don't want anybody to get confused because this is about K-1 visas, okay? So... To make sure you guys are fully clear, the I-134 for a K-1 visa, the Declaration of Financial Support, is filled out, signed, and dated, and by the sponsor. The beneficiary does not sign anything on the I-134. <clears throat> Teja Sweeney Mumadi. So if my fiancé does not get his green card for six months, he cannot travel to any to other countries or work in the USA. You are correct. You are 100% correct. John Labatt, my apologies. Everyone, my name is all capital letters. Yep, high five back to you. Okay, no worries, John. I'm going to fix that. Thank you again, everyone. No worries. Christy Garcia, got it. Thank you so much for helping us out. Christy, no worries. Okay, I've been talking for one hour and 39 minutes. Tasha Sweeney, you get the last word. How long does, it, long does it take to schedule an interview in the UK? About eight weeks. I am going to go and get one of Pete B's Mountain Dews from my fridge and Denise and everybody and all you, everyone that's 
did super chats today. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Today is Saturday. I will be back. I will be back at 7 o'clock Central Time on what day? Monday. Pete B., I sent my fiance Manila documents, UPS overnight, got them in 24 hours. High five. JD, hi Diego, how are you? Doing good. How about if beneficiary resigns from work? Irrelevant. The sponsors are responsible for the beneficiary. Immigration don't care what job your beneficiary has. Hail Aramarium, Elizabeth, we're waiting invoice number. Can we fill DS-160? You can, but it's only good for 30 days. Juan Carlos Para, thank you, Diego. See you Monday. Denise Jefferson, see you Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Fin de semana, Denise Jefferson. That's Spanish for enjoy your weekend. And I'm going to get a Mountain Dew. Irwin, Irwin. Three days ago, I attended interview with my fiance in Lima, Peru. But embassy requires certified or original divorce papers. I've been saying that, guys, for the last year. So I'm process of getting those. Delayed the visa processing. Irwin, if you had been following this channel six months ago, you would have not had this problem. See you Monday. High five. Congratulations, Irwin, on your visa interview. 